Okay, video number three for lesson 5.5, and we're almost done with this lesson. Still sticking with this idea of inequalities in one triangle, only dealing with one triangle at a time. This is called the triangle inequality theorem. Okay, so obviously inequality tells me once again I'm going to be dealing with less than signs and greater than signs. Okay, we're going to be dealing specifically with the sides in this triangle. Nothing to do with angles in this triangle. It's all about the sides. All right, now. If I, if I had this, maybe like a sidewalk or something, and there was a sidewalk from here to here and here to here and here to here, and I told you that I want you to get from point A to point C, which path would you take? Would you walk way up here on the sidewalk to B and then way down here to C? Or would most of you just go straight from here to here? Well, if you're in a hurry, you're probably going to go straight from here to here. Now, if you like taking a leisurely walk and taking your time, you might go do this. I think some of you do this when you go to your classes. You know, you start at Mr. Oates's room and you have to go down to maybe Miss Lynn's room or something like that, your English room. And you end up you know, going upstairs and doing something and then kind of coming back downstairs for some reason. You like to take the long path, all right? Well, the shortest path just goes straight from my room down to the English room, okay? This is shorter than this plus this. That's what this theorem says. Okay, it says if you take any two sides of a triangle and add them together, they're going to be greater than the third side by itself. So let's write that down. Any two sides of a triangle added together are greater than the third side by itself. Okay, so let's take a look at that right here. All right, so if we've got this, A, B plus B, C, that's what I was just talking about. If I add A, B, and B, C together, it's not going to equal A, C. What does it say? It says it's going to be greater than. So I'm going to put a greater than sign right here. Okay, now the same thing works here. Well, what if I add A, B, and A, C together? Is that going to equal BC? I don't know why I have these two letters so far apart here. We'll do that and make it look a little better. Okay. Well, no. If I walk straight from B to C, that's a whole lot shorter than going from B to A and then over to C. All right. So AB plus AC is going to be more than, greater than BC. Now I've got one more option. I left AC all by itself. I left BC by itself. I haven't left AB by itself yet. So I can do that. I got that down here. BC plus AC is going to be greater than AB. All right, remember it says any two sides. So here it was AB and BC. The top left and the top right, and I left the bottom by itself. Here, AB plus AC, and I left this one by itself. And then here I added these two and left that one by itself. So you gotta be able to do all three options. Okay, so make sure you can do all three options. All right. Now, how we usually use this, there's a couple different algebra things. So let me give you a first example. So two sides of a triangle are 8 and 12. What are the possible lengths of the third side? Okay, so go ahead and copy this down. <coughs> Remember, pause the video if you need to. I'm going to draw this. So I've got an 8 and a 12 and an x. And I don't know what x is. So let's think through this. Let's think through all three possibilities. So I could add 8 and 12 together, and they have to be more than x. Or I could add 8 and x together, and they have to be more than 12. Or <clears throat> I could add 12 and x together, and they have to be more than 8. Okay, so there's three possibilities. Now, by the time we finish, we're going to narrow this down to two possibilities, though. All right, but let's solve these. So 8 plus 12 is 20. So 20 is greater than x. All right? Now, remember, if we read this backwards, we can even write it if we turn it around. x is less than 20. Okay? All right, here, we have to do a little moving of things, some canceling. So we subtract 8, and we get x is greater than 4. All right, and over here, when we subtract 12, we get x is greater than negative 4. Now, what's going to happen if you do this correctly? You're going to get two signs that are the same, 
and you're going to get one that's different. Okay, So we're going to leave this one alone for right now. We don't have to worry about it. we got to think about these two. And you have to pick the one that's more restrictive. Now, what do I mean by more restrictive? It means it allows less things to happen. <clears throat> Most of you, you probably have, you know, parents, one of whom is a little more restrictive than the other one. So you know that if you want to go out with some friends, you're going to ask maybe mom, hey, can I go out with some friends? Because mom will say, yeah, you don't have to be home till 11. But dad would say you have to be home by 10. Okay, so dad is more restrictive. He allows you to do less. Or maybe it's the other way around. Or maybe your parents, they talk to each other first, and then they come up with an answer, and then they come tell you the answer. So you, are, you can't really uh, try to manipulate them or whatever. Okay, but that's the idea of more restrictive. One allows you maybe to do one thing more than the other. All right, um, in this case, we have to think about what this means with our numbers. So this says x is greater than four. So it could be like 4.1. If we're only thinking about integers, it could be five or six or seven. But this one says it's okay to be zero. It's okay to be one. This, you know, one is greater than negative four. And this one says, no, you're not allowed to have one because it's not greater than positive four. Okay, so this one is more restrictive. It allows less things. Okay, if you look at a number line, okay, four, and then way over here is negative four. Okay, so one of them is saying it has to be greater than four. The other one is saying, no, it's greater than negative four. So you see how this one allows all these extra answers in here? This one's more permissive. This one's more restrictive. Okay, this has less possibilities than this. That's the one we want to choose. Okay, so we're going to use this x is greater than 4 and x is less than 20. We're going to combine them together. Remember, I talked about this in another uh, video earlier where we always put the smallest number first, so 4. We flip this around, so 4 is less than x. And we already know x is less than 20, so we put less than 20. So my third side is somewhere between 4 and 20. I don't know where, but it's somewhere between 4 and 20. Now, don't write your answer down by doing something like this. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Because you just left out all the fractions and all the decimals. It might be 4.7. Or it could be 19.8. Or it could be 19 two thirds. Or it could be 11 and a half. All right? So don't just list numbers. You need to write your answer like this. All right? Okay, now let's take a look at another example real quick. So this time I got 4 and 11. Okay, 4 and 11. So let's do the same three things. And then I'm going to teach you a little shortcut on this one that works really, really, really well if you understand it. Okay, but let's do this uh, the long way and then we'll talk about how we might come up with a shortcut. So I want to know what are the possible links of the third side again. So 4 and 11. So copy it down. I want you to try it just like we did this one. Write all three equations. You're going to have a less than and two greater thans, or you might have two greater thans and a less than. Figure out which is more restrictive and then try to come up with your answer. Okay, so do that real quick right here. 4 and 11. All right, good. Here we go. So, 4 plus 11 is greater than x. 4 plus x is greater than 11. 11 plus x is greater than 4. Okay, those should have been the three inequalities that you started with. 15 is greater than x, flip it, x is less than 15, okay? Subtract 4, x is greater than 7. Subtract 11, x is greater than negative 7. Okay, these two have the same direction, so we know we're definitely dealing with this one. Which of these is more restrictive? Well, this one says it's okay to be negative 5, or 0, or 2. This one says no, it's got to start bigger than 7, like 7.01 or something like that, 7.001. We can get really close to 7, okay? But numbers like 7.5 or 8 or 9, this one's more restrictive, so we're going to use this one. We're going to flip it, though, so it says 7 is less than x. Then we bring this in, and we put 15, and we have our answer. Our third side is somewhere between 7 and 15. Now, let's talk about the shortcut. Because once you understand the shortcut, these get really, really, really easy. Look at the smallest number here. It's 4. Look at what we started with, 12 and 8. What can you do with 12 and 8 to get 4? What do you do with them? Well, it's right there. We subtracted them. 
What do we do with 12 and 8 to get the biggest number? Well, it's right there. We added them. So I subtract. I put this little thing in here, less than x, less than, and I add. Okay, so how would that work here? If I subtract 11 and 4, I get what? I get 7. And if I add 11 and 4, I get 15. And it works that way every single time. Subtract, add, fill the middle in correctly. Now, hopefully you understand all of this, but that means you don't have to show all this work every single time from now on. Okay? If you understand the shortcut, I subtract, I add, and I put my x in the middle. Make sure you always put your less than signs. I get some people want to put greater than signs. They put less than over here and greater than over here. You're going to get it wrong if you start doing that. Okay, so I'm going to give you two real quick examples to try using this shortcut. Subtract and add. Okay, so let's look at this real quick. So two sides of a triangle are 6 and 14. What are the possible lengths of the third side? Now, instead of writing all this out, just put 6 and 14 you know, and then put a question mark for the third side or something like that. So let's try this without doing all the algebra work. So remember our shortcut says we subtract. What do we get when we subtract 14 and 6? We get 8. And then we fill in the middle correctly. And then we add. And what do we get when we add 6 and 14? We get 20. And that's it. That's our answer. Those are supposed to be really easy questions. These are the types of questions that you love to see on a quiz. Subtract fill in the middle, and then add. Okay, one more. And then we're going to do something a little bit harder. Two sides of a triangle are 8 and 8. What are the possible lengths of the third side? So once again, you don't have to write all this down. Just put 8 and 8, and then third side, question mark. Okay, now if you want to fill in the middle first with this, that's fine. So we subtract. Well, when we subtract, we get 0. Add 16. I'm done. Okay. Now, this is an isosceles triangle. So if I were to draw this isosceles triangle really, really, really narrow. Okay, do you see how we could get really close to zero here? And then the other direction, if I draw it really, really, really wide. Okay, that's where I'm getting really, really, really close to 16. Getting really big. But if I completely flatten this out, then the 8 and the 8 added together would give me 16. So if x equaled 16, I wouldn't have a triangle anymore. It would be completely flat. Over here, if x equaled 0, the 8 and the 8 would come together, and I wouldn't have a triangle anymore either. So it's got to be bigger than 0, less than 16. All right, now, next one's a little harder. This is more of an honors type question. So CP students, you probably won't ever see this. All right, um, now actually... Uh, honors kids, you definitely need to know how to do this. All right. So, um, so CP kids, I'll tell you this right now. I'm, I'm not going to put this on your video quiz. I'm probably not going to put on a regular quiz. Um, so, just letting you know that straight up. Honors kids, you definitely have to watch this though. All right. Here we go. Copy it down. Let's take a look at it. All right. So you got this copied down. Now we do the same exact thing we did before. We add two sides together, they're greater than the third side. The only problem is that this is a little harder because we got X's all over the place. Okay, so you're going to come up with three different inequalities you've got to work with though. So let's add these two together first. So 2X plus 7 plus 3X minus 1. If we add, we get 5X. A positive 7 and a negative 1 is a positive 6. And that's greater than 7X minus 20. Okay, so that's one possibility. Okay, let's do the next one. So let's maybe add these two together. So I get 9x, and here I would get negative 13. So 9x minus 13 is greater than 3x minus 1. Okay. Now let's add these two together. So I get 10x. This gives me a negative 21. And that's greater than this one over here, 2x plus 7. Okay, so let's solve each of these three things. So if we subtract 7x, and I'm also going to subtract 6 to just kind of shorten up this work a little bit. Okay, I get negative 2x is greater than negative 26. Now I have to divide by negative 2. I get x, I get a positive 13, but hopefully you remember this from algebra class. When you divide inequalities by a negative or multiply inequalities by a negative, you have to change your sign. 
Okay, so this has to switch over to a less than sign. Okay, you guys remember doing that in Algebra 1, I hope. All right, let's look at this one. So I subtract 3x. I add 13. Okay, this cancels, this cancels. I get 6x is greater than 12. I divide by 6, and I get x is greater than 2. Okay, third one. Subtract the 2x, add 21. Subtract 2x, I add 21. I get 8x is greater than 28. I divide by 8. This doesn't divide evenly, but I can reduce it to 7 over 2. So now I have three things. Just like we did before, we got three possibilities. I look for the two that are the same direction. In this case, less or the two greater than x is less than 13 is definitely going to be part of my answer. Which one is more restrictive? Well, that means we have to know what 7 over 2 is. Well, 2 goes into 7 three times, so we could write this as x is greater than 3 and a half. Well, which one's more restrictive? This one. This says that something like 2.1 is okay. This says, no, it's not. It's got to be bigger than 3.5, and, and 2.1 isn't bigger than 3.5. This says 3 is okay. And this one says, no, it's not. It's not bigger than 3.5, so no, it doesn't work. So this one's more restrictive. Now, remember, we take the smallest answer. We flip the direction, so 3.5, or you could leave it as 7 halves, is less than x. And then x is less than 13. And there's my answer. All right? These are a little harder, so I'm going to give you one of these to try on your own to see if you understand it. Okay? So make sure you set up all your equations. You're usually going to get one less than and two greater thans. That's what we've been getting most of the time. But there are some times where you might get two less thans and one greater than. Same idea. You pick the one that's most restrictive and then merge it into a final answer. Okay, so I want you to try that on this triangle right here. 4x plus 8, 6x plus 4, and 12x minus 6. <clears throat> okay, so you should have paused this. You should have done this by now. And I'm going to show the work. You can follow along. I'm going to move pretty fast through it, though. So pause, rewind as necessary. Okay, we're going to add these two together. We get 10x plus 12. It has to be greater than 12x minus 6. I'm going to solve that one just real quick. So minus 12x, and I'm going to also minus 12. Those cancel. I got my minus 12x, my minus 12. I get negative 2x is greater than negative 18. I got to divide by negative 2. Dividing means I got to flip the sign, so x is less than 9. Okay, let's go with another 2. I'm going to add these two together. So that gives me 18x minus 2 is greater than 4x plus 8. I'm going to subtract 4x. I'm going to add 2. These cancel. I get 14x is greater than 10. I divide by 14. I get x is greater than 5 sevenths. Okay, which ones have I added? I added 6 and 12. I added uh, 6 and 4. I haven't done 12 and 4. So 12x plus 4x is 16x. Positive 8 and a negative 6 is a positive 2. And then that's greater than 6x plus 4. So I subtract 6x. I subtract 2. These cancel, these cancel. I get 10x is greater than 2. I divide by 10. x is greater than 1 fifth. Okay, so you should have all that work. Now, once again, this is the only less than sign, so I know that's definitely going to be a part of my answer. Which of these is more restrictive? Well, that's a little bit harder to figure out. Now, if necessary, go to some decimals. This as a decimal is 0.714 and a bunch of other decimals. This is 0.2. So, this one says, you know, 0.5 is okay. I'm okay. That's all right. And this one says, no, it's not. It's got to be more than 0.714. This one says that 0.3 is okay. This one says, no, it's not. All right, so this one is more restrictive. Put your smallest number first. That's your 5 sevenths. Now, when I say smallest, not, not here anymore. We already ruled that one out because it's not more restrictive. So, smallest of these, so 5 sevenths is less than x, flip that order around, x is less than 9, that is my final answer. Okay, that's it for Lesson 5.5. Got three videos, make sure you watch them all, and come ready to work in class.